lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. 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 Okay, I've always heard the name, y'all. The old folks tried to warn me. I thought I knew what they were talking about Because I've always heard the story But never felt it for myself, y'all Well, until just the other day And something happens in my spirit Every time I say that name That name is Jesus Yeah, Jesus 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 Say the name Like it'll never lose its power I hear the people say they need a Lord Every minute, every hour But I never felt it for myself, y'all Well, until just the other night I called the name of Jesus And afterwards I felt alright yeah, it was like a cool breeze Blowing on the inside of water Rushing in my body a fire Burning away everything that I don't need And making me right It was so real to act like It wasn't happening Happened too fast for me to suppress it And after that I tried my eyes And I couldn't stop smiling Cause the whole time mother was right when I call Jesus, yeah And I might fall down He'll be your friend He'll be around Oh, he's something like a strong tower Yeah, he could take away the pain And if you want his power You gotta call his name And his name is Jesus oh, that day is Jesus, 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 Join us for another episode of Change. And your host, Pastor. 
Dr. Jim Hampton. Well, welcome everybody. Are you praising the Lord today? Praise God. It's good to have you all here with us today. We have a message today I think is really for everybody, but I'm going to emphasize on one group of folks alone. I'm going to emphasize on the older folks who are listening. You know, when I was five or six years old, I thought my parents, who were then probably in their 20s, I thought they were really, really old. And when I was a teenager, I thought people in their 50s were really, really old. I thought my grandparents were ancient But now that I'm in my 70s myself, I'm not sure who is old. Mm -hmm. So how do you know when you're getting old? Well, here's what some old people, quote unquote, have to say about their age. You know you're getting old when almost everything hurts, and what doesn't hurt doesn't work. You look forward to a dull evening at home. All the names in your little black book end in M.D., Your knees buckle and your belt won't. You sink your teeth into a stake and they stay there. And you know that little gray-haired lady that helps you across the street these days? That's your little wife. You know you're getting old when the only thing you want for your birthday is not to be reminded of it. Well, a lot of people feel that way. And I can say a lot of that may be true and may be even true in my life. But you know, God can use you no matter how old you are, how young you are. And that's basically what I'm going to talk about today. How old or how young do we have to be for God to use us? Now, if you're not a senior now, you know, all you have to do is stick around. And sooner or later, people will start calling you a senior. Most people would say, I'd rather stick around but they don't like the the idea of being senior. It was great in high school, but when you get out of high school and, and college, you don't really want to be called senior. I just want to be called Jim. I want to be called me. I don't like categories. God isn't through with me, so why should people talk about me as though God is? God is not through with me. He's not through with any of us because we're gaining years. We're only gaining experience the longer we live. We can talk about a senior moment, and we all have those. I think I even had those when I was younger because I was easily distracted and I would forget things. But you know, if you can't remember where you put your glasses or your teeth these years, you might consider yourself getting a little older. God's word says that through the outward man, though the outward man perishes, the inward man is renewed day by day. And the truth of that matter is, as we move on in life, as we progress from one stage of life to the other, as we age, as we get grayer, We ought not to be giving up. We should be gearing up. Our gait, our way we walk may be slowing down, but inside of us, we have so much experience. We have so much faith that has built up in us seniors and those seniors out there that we should be gearing up for battle. It's not what's happening on the outside, but what God is doing on the inside of you and me. God's preparing all of us as we get older in the Lord for some of the best spiritual moments of our lives. When you look throughout the Word of God, you see that some of the most powerful people that God ever used were older folks. To say that God didn't use young folks too, he used David. You remember David was just a youngster, maybe 12 years old when he slew Goliath. God can use who he wants to. But he will only use the ones that hold him dear, the ones that hold a basket full of faith in their heart, those that are willing to be used. You know, and I'm tired of seeing seniors who have just given up and feel that let somebody else do it. No, God wants to use all of us. 
He wants to use that knowledge you have inside of you. He wants to have the experience. He wants to know that he can use what he's given you. You should be willing to use everything God has given you. Look at all the times God has answered your prayers. Can you pass that knowledge on to others? Sure you can. My duty today, I feel, is to give encouragement to the older folks among us, whoever they are. To give encouragement to that senior who always wanted to be used of God, and he or she has almost given up that idea. They may think that their time of being used by God is over because the years are mounting up. Phooey. That's not true. That's not true, and it shouldn't be an idea that we hold in our minds. It's never too late to be used by God. God loves us to use – he wants us to use everything that we have. He wants us to be dedicated to him 100%, and age has very little to do with it. The only thing that has to do with whether we're used or not is our spiritual maturity, whether we have spiritual maturity inside of us. David was young at 12, but he had the spiritual maturity of an ancient man. He knew exactly who his God was, and he knew what God could do. He knew what God could do through him, and he wasn't willing to have the devil stand in his way. That's what God wants us all to feel like. Abraham was 75 years old when God began to call him to work for him and do things. Abraham was a senior, absolutely was a senior when when God promised him and Sarah that they would have a son. And it wasn't until Abraham was 100 years old and Sarah was 90 that they finally had their promised child. Age didn't stand in their way. Moses, now if you remember him, it wasn't until he was 80 years old that Moses stood before the burning bush. And God, God told him that he had plans for him as a senior to perform. God took this senior and used him mightily, if you know the the deeds of Moses. He wasn't afraid of what his last birthday was. He wasn't afraid of how many candles were, were on his birthday cake. That didn't scare him away. Don't ever think that God hasn't got a call on your lives. And don't ever think that it's too late for you or too soon for you. If you're a young person and you have such strength for the Lord, if you have fervor for the Lord and you want to Save the world. God can use you. Don't let whatever age you have stop you from serving the Lord. He can use you. Here's the point. Sometimes the enemy, the devil, will tell you that you can't produce, that you can't contribute, that that your productive years aren't here yet or your productive years are over. That's a total lie. Throughout Christian history, seniors and young people have produced great things for the Lord. They've started revivals. They've, they've let mighty times of praise in the church. And they've written great hymns and praise songs. And they've become great pastors and evangelists. And they know what it takes, the senior does, to, to create an atmosphere of faith. Because they've had a long list of experiences with prayer and God's answers in their life. And a young, brand-new Christian usually don't have all those experiences. In fact, there's no way they could. But David had a special faith. And I know there's folks out there that have a special faith and a fervor for the Lord. And they can be used. You can be used by the Lord. It is yet to be proven that can't use just anybody he wants. He can use whatever he wants, whoever he wants. God hasn't taken us seniors from tragedy to tragedy, nor rescued you and I with family problems and sicknesses and desperation and through headaches and and all kinds of problems we've had in our lives without being able to use that information. God wants to use it all to save the world. I think today's Christian church is really missing the natural plan that God set up for the church. You know, the trend now is to gear everything in the church for the youth, for the young. And this is not just an elderly person speaking. This is fact. They've taken traditional Christian music out of most churches. They've replaced it with contemporary music, which in most cases would drive seniors out of the room. 
It's, it sounds like a rock concert, and if you have an objective mind, listen to the music next time. Go home and listen to a rock concert and, and tell me the difference. Can you hear the words, praising the Lord? Usually you can hear the guitars and the drums. You can't hear the words. How does that provide worship? Everything is geared towards the new, the pretty, the young, the worldly sound, sermons that tickle the ear, sermons that don't offend the youth. Now the church, if they read the Bible, they're missing out on what God intended to happen because the seniors were supposed to teach the young about Jesus. They were. They were supposed to teach the young. They weren't supposed to be pushed aside because their so-called, quote-unquote, productive years are gone. No. God gave them experiences for a reason, Mm -hmm. so they could be used to teach the youth, so they wouldn't stumble and make the same stupid mistakes we made, hopefully. Supposed to give people the benefit of what we have learned throughout our long lives. And I hope we start learning our lesson. We're losing all the experience by casting out and chasing out the seniors from our church. How can young pastors who've had no experiences, have had little tragedy in their life, and had few things that God have brought them through, how can they teach other people to go through life? It sounds like the blind teaching the blind to me. The new Christian in the church must rely on the seniors and their seniors in their congregation to bring the church back to that strong faith that was based upon knowledge of what God has done in our lives. We can't just read books and know God. We have to know him from experience. Praise God. The Lord loves us and he wants us to take total advantage of all he has given us not just the young people, the old people too, and everybody in between. He has answered your prayer so you can go to the next person and tell him or that lady that God has done a wonderful thing for me. Be a witness. You know, we've all been young. We've all been young. And God will judge us by what we do in our life. But I believe God will not judge us by how we start. He will judge us by how we end the race, how we finish our life. At the 1968 Olympics, for instance, an hour after the marathon winner crossed the finish line, hour after the winner crossed the finish line, there was a man from Tanzania named John Stephen Ankwari. He limped across the finish line an hour after the race was won. He'd been injured in a fall early in the race, but he didn't give up. He was asked why he didn't quit. He said, why didn't you quit? Everybody else had almost gone home. He said, my country did not send me 7,000 miles to just start this race. My country sent me here to finish. That's what God sent us here to do. He's not just going to reward us for filling a church full of youthful people. He's going to fill us with experiences so everyone, no matter what age, can worship together, can compare experiences together, can learn from each other, and we can build our faith not on just a youthful zeal, but on what has been accomplished through a long elderly life. Plan to, with God's help, I plan to improve as a Christian. Even as I get older, I plan to gain more spiritual strength along with spiritual experience with each year that I live. I plan to fight that old devil until I can't fight anymore. I plan to go out fighting. I plan to go out in a flame of glory. Praise God, how about you? How about you, senior? Have you given up? God doesn't want you to give up just because you're afraid of your age, just because you've slowed down in body, because you've slowed down in speech. Use the experiences God has given you to win souls. That's what we're here for. We're not just supposed to 
keep it to ourselves and bring it out once in a while and polish it off and admire what God did for us in private, God expects us to share it with everybody. When I get to heaven someday, I don't want God to look at me and say, who did you bring with you? There's nobody behind you. There's nobody coming because of you. Do you want that to happen to you? I don't. I want God to look at me and say, well done, good and faithful servant. Praise God. As seniors, it's not over for us, for you. I know it's easy to give up and think, I'm too old and God isn't going to use me anymore. But God isn't saying it is. He's saying it's not over. If you're still breathing, you're able to do something for the Lord. Maybe you're young. Maybe you you feel like you're too young. Maybe in your youth, senior, you were a pastor, an elder, a deacon, a Bible teacher, maybe a singer, a musician of some kind. Maybe you were just a normal Christian man or woman. And maybe you've retired or you're just resting after a long Christian life. My words to you is, God is not through with you. You may think you're retired, but you're not retired from the Lord's service, and he has a job for you. God may be whispering in your ear, or he may be tugging at your heart about doing something special for him, like witness to your best friend or your, uh, that new acquaintance you met in the mall or in the doctor's office, or a relative, or someone you just met at a restaurant. If nothing else, if we do nothing else, God wants us to share with others what he has done for us. He did a miracle within us, didn't he? If you're a Christian, he did a miracle job in here. He changed us. He forgave us. He forgave you. That's something that you should be ever ready to share with others around you. I, I know that most of us are probably shy. That's a terrible three-letter word, S-H-Y, shy. And we don't like to talk to strangers. And most of us at this age, we're, we were brought up to be reserved and quiet and, and not be pushy. But the Lord Jesus, he put within us something that designed us. To share. He wants us to share. He designed us that way. God's saving grace is something that is to be duplicated over and over and over again with others. Not just us. Not just something we cherish as an experience. It should be on our lips. Yes, God did a miracle in our hearts and minds and lives within us as Christians. But we're not supposed to hide it away out of the view of others. We aren't supposed to take that experience and the memories and, of that event and, and just admire it like a photo album sometimes. No. It's in here. It should be ready to bust out of your being every moment. We aren't supposed to hide it. God changes for a reason. He didn't just forgive us to get us to heaven. He didn't just forgive you to get you to heaven. No. He forgave you, he forgave me, so that we'll bring others with us. Our conversion, our Christian walk is there to be shared with our friends and families and young friends and neighbors and anyone else who's around us. Don't let what wisdom you carry, senior, within yourself be wasted. Don't allow pressure from other people try to convince you that you're beyond the age of being able to be used by the Lord. Don't let bashfulness keep you from sharing your experiences and your faith with others. And if over time, if that once excitement that you had in the Lord, if it's cooled down, if that newness of life, that thrill about your forgiveness through Jesus, if it's become watered down and the coals are barely working or there's no flame there anymore i say this get over it get on your knees and ask the lord to rekindle those coals and make that flame bright again you have a duty to share with others 
we're not supposed to just rest now. Rest, but keep your lips working for the Lord. If you and I acknowledge God before men, then he, God, will acknowledge us, won't he? The word says if we don't acknowledge him, he won't acknowledge us. I don't want that to happen, and I'm sure you don't either. If we deny the Father and what he's done for us, if we just keep our mouths shut and never share God's forgiving miracle with others, what kind of a reward do you, do you and I think we'll get in heaven? If you're too bashful to share, with Jesus, share Jesus with others, I say get over it. If you don't think it's important to share Jesus with others, get over it and think again. God expects us to keep doing things as long as we can. If your spiritual fire has gone out, ask God to rekindle it. He can put gasoline on those weak coals. He can make that inward fire blaze again. He can make that good news in your life come busting out of its seams. Even if you feel too old and tired or battered or sick, God can still use you to change others. It's never too late to do a wonderful job for Jesus. Allow God to put new life into your heart and your mind and your soul and your spirit. He can make a complete change in your outlook and your attitude. All of us must allow him, God, to give us new excitement about Jesus, our Lord. Let God work in you again by by giving you opportunities to share with others. Ask him to give you opportunities to share with others. Ask him to make it easy for you. If you're shy, ask him to put you in positions where all you have to do is utter your, your mouth and just say a few words. Ask him to make other people ask you the question, what have you got inside of you that I want? Ask God to make it easy. You're never too old. Billy Sunday was a great evangelist well over 100 years ago. He said, I am against the devil, and I know you and I are. He said, I'm against the devil, and I'll kick him as long as I've got a foot, and I'll fight him as long as I've got a fist. I'll butt him as long as I've got a head. I'll bite him as long as I've got a tooth. And when I'm old and fistless and footless and toothless, I'll gum him till I go home to glory. Inspiring words. He wasn't willing to give up. It didn't matter how old he was, how much strength he had, whether he had teeth in his head or not. He was going to fight that old devil to the last breath. That's what we have to do. Say to yourself today, I will not stay silent. I will not stay silent. I will not stay silent. I may be old in the world's view, but God is not through with me yet. I may not be perfect in health, but God is blessing me. And I'm going to pass that blessing on to others, as many people as I can. God, please give me opportunities. Make it easy that I just have to say a few words. Make people ask me, what have you got? I want to have it too. Let there be openings made that we bashful people can do it. I have great wisdom gained from many years of walking with Jesus. You may say that. And that wisdom has changed us. But... I will not stay silent. Use that wisdom that you've gained over the many years to convict others, to bring others to the Lord. Don't let your weakness, don't let your age, don't let your youth, don't let your bashfulness, don't let any of these things keep you silent about the Lord. Don't let the devil convince you that you have nothing to give because you do. Don't let him convince you that you have nothing to share that could make a difference in others' lives because you do. Don't let anything either in you or around you keep you from sharing with this dying world because it is a dying world. It needs to know the truth. Share literally everything you can with whoever you can. Help the Lord save this world from eternal death because it is going to hell on a handbasket. If you watch the news around you, I've never seen so much confusion and lying and deceiving and evil doing in my life. And to change it, we have to start with us. Don't let somebody else do it. Don't let that announcer on the news, don't expect him to change the world. He can't. Only you and I individually can start this revolution and change the world for the Lord. God can't save anyone unless they know about him. 
unless they know what Jesus can do for them, they can't be changed. And it's up to us, to each of from, it's up to each of us to do our part. Don't expect others to do the job. I don't want to get to heaven someday and have God ask me again. I don't want him to ask me, why didn't you bring others with you? Are you prepared to answer that question of your maker? When you get to heaven and he smiles and says, welcome. Is he going to look behind you and say, well, where are they? Be able to tell your God when you reach heaven that, Lord, I did as you commanded me. I spread the word and others are coming behind me because of my witness. You may not see them now, but they're coming, Lord. Here they come. Praise God. I want there to be a crowd out there that heard the word from my lips. Maybe it wasn't just all I said. Maybe I just started the process. Maybe I just planted the seed. Praise God. But think about it, folks. Don't carry the greatest miracle with you, the miracle of forgiveness. Don't carry it inside of you so people can't see. Don't carry it to your grave, not having shared it with anybody else. Share it with someone else today. Be an active soldier for the Lord because God is not through with you yet. Until next time, this is Pastor Jim Hampton saying, keep looking up and praising the Lord. Hey, honey.
Walking around. 